Hi everyone! I just woke up, so I figured what's a better way to start my day than film a YouTube video? No, but actually, welcome to Painting in the Past, a series where I talk about something from the past and I paint something. This is kind of like the girls do their makeup and talk about true crime kind of thing, so if you like those, you'll probably like this. So today we're going to be talking about the life of post-impressionist painter Vincent Van Gogh. And just a disclaimer, this video talks about like mental health issues and suicide. So viewer discretion is advised. I'm going to be painting on this ornament. It's glass. I think I'm going to do like a little starry night thing, but do like a splatter paint background instead just to let you know what's going on. Van Gogh was born on March 30th of 1853 in Holland. His father was a pastor and he was one of seven kids and he was actually named after his stillborn brother who, this is kind of crazy, was born exactly a year prior to him being born. Growing up, he really struggled to find his identity and direction in life. He believed his true calling was to be a preacher and preach the gospel like his father, but later decided to pursue art instead. By this time, Van Gogh had already had two unsuccessful relationships, worked in a bookstore as a clerk, an art salesman, and a preacher, but he was dismissed because he was too enthusiastic. That's terrible. I feel like this is actually sad because, first of all, that's definitely discouraging, but it probably influenced his mental health issues like through the years. Okay, so Van Gogh decided to move to Belgium to study art, determined to become happy by creating beauty. And he began painting for the first time at 27, which this is kind of amazing to me because like, not you have to start when you're young, but like, he picked up painting for the first time at 27. Like it's never too late to start a hobby. I thought that was so cool. So in 1886, Van Gogh moved to Paris to study with Corman, where he ended up meeting several of impressionist painters like Monet. And these encounters inspired him to paint more like these impressionist painters using a lighter palette and shorter brush strokes but he wasn't really successful in replicating this style. So it kind of forced him to create his own like bolder style, which is why we see darker outlines and like brighter colors in his paintings. And then in 1888, Van Gogh moved to, he moved south to Arles. I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, but he hoped to found an art school with his friends here. Unfortunately, there was a little bit of an incident with another artist, which basically ended in Van Gogh um, chasing him with a razor blade out of the studio. And then he cut a piece of his earlobe off. Not his best moment, but... There's actually a little bit of a mystery surrounding this whole incident. I originally thought he cut his whole ear off to send to like an ex-girlfriend, but I guess that's like not the case. Allegedly, he only cut part of his ear lobe off. Um, and then following like this incident, he brought it to like a prostitute at a nearby brothel. Don't know which one's worse. They're both not great. But the real like truth behind this whole like story is still like a little bit unknown. So following this incident with the ear, Van Gogh checked himself into a mental asylum, which is basically the equivalent of like a psychiatric like facility nowadays. And he spent the next couple of years here. And he was under the care of like a lot of doctors they didn't know what was like really wrong with him. They just knew he was like losing it. Um, so during this time at the mental asylum, he still painted. And actually Starry Night is the scene outside of his window 
that he saw, which is really cool. I didn't know that. And then, like, these mental health issues were, like, really relevant throughout Van Gogh's entire life. And, like, some of his symptoms included depression, hallucinations, seizures, and a lot of, like, psychiatrists and psychologists um, nowadays have tried to, like, diagnose what he had, but they really don't, like, know. There's, like, a lot of lists of, like, what they think it could be, but, like, some of the closest are, like, schizophrenia and, like, stuff like that. So after a few years, he seemed to be doing better and was released on again under the care of these doctors. Um, but two months later, he committed suicide for the good of all at age 37. And there's also like some mystery around this because like, I couldn't really find a clear like answer as to what really happened. Some people say he like shot himself in the head. Some people say he shot himself in the chest, but it didn't kill him. And then it got infected and he died from like the infection a few days later. Really sad. I mean, like both aren't a good situation and it kind of like is telling to like the suffering he had in his life like throughout his whole life he was poor overworked malnourished and like relied on the support of his brother who he moved to Paris to like be closer to him kind of he was so obsessed with his art that he would use the money his brother sent to him for art supplies not like food or like things he actually needed so his diet usually consisted of like bread coffee cigarettes and alcohol mm, how nutritious um and throughout his life he only sold one painting which was like just a few months before he died which this is kind of crazy he sold it for 400 francs which i don't know what the like conversion rate at the time was but now 400 francs is like 434 dollars this is so insane seeing how much his paintings are worth now like could you imagine and he made over 900 paintings in the 10 years he was painting he only painted for 10 years which this averages to one painting every 36 hours are you kidding that's so much painting which like i understand if like this is your life but like that just seems insane this is just like honestly so tragic because of how famous and like how valued his artwork is now versus like he literally couldn't get people to buy his art at the time insane so some of his most famous works include starry night cafe terrace at night and sunflowers and it's really hard to find like actual values to how much these paintings are worth because they're deemed like priceless and not for sale but i did come up with some like ballpark numbers um, so starry night is estimated at 100 million cafe terrace at night is estimated around like 200 million and then sunflowers was last purchased in 2017 for 40 million this just blows my mind like he couldn't sell these paintings and like they were probably sitting i don't know in a studio or wherever for how long before someone was like yes this is it and it's crazy to imagine like all the suffering he went through compared to like how we think of him today if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more of these please like it and subscribe and let me know in the comments what stories you want to see next it doesn't necessarily have to be art history it could be just like normal history too i think that would be cool